Yeah, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, welcome to our uh, talk. Uh, we so were expecting students, but you just see here veterans with lots of knowledge, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, we're going to speak about um, container lifecycle management. Um, we are uh, working at edge, um, edge environments, so it is more interesting uh, uh, our teams. Uh, I'm Yariv, um, Senior Principal QE from Red Hat. Um, I like my company and I like the product. And this is Rakesh, my mate. Yeah, I'm uh, Rakesh Mosley. Uh, I work with Yariv on the, uh, the Rivals We're uh, working team. with Dan Walsh. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, our, our talk is, is going to be interactive. And you know, I would like to hear from uh, what you guys know, what do you guys think. Uh, so we'll go through a, a quick session overview. Uh, you know, we'll kind of hit a lot of fundamentals today. Uh, we'll see, uh, we'll, we'll ask ourselves what containers really are, what is systemd, and why do we, you know, why integrate them, right? And, and then Podman and systemd, like we'll talk about the evolution of systemd integration with Podman. And finally, uh, we'll, the center is quadlets. We'll try to understand what, this new uh, integration, like tool within Podman is, and we'll see a quick demo with uh, Quadlets uh, following. So uh, lifecycle management in an edge device. And I want us to imagine a day in life of an edge device. You know, many of you here, uh, how many of you drive uh, Tesla cars? You know, Teslas and EVs and a lot of software-driven cars. You know, we have uh, an SOC board, like computer that runs. It's a uh, a very uh, like fast computer that runs and there's a lot of software processes that are running, right? And so we will ask ourselves like, how do we manage uh, like software that runs in an edge environment? So we have a lot of requirements for the software processes. It, processes. it has to be lightweight and efficient and there should be process isolation. We have a lot of critical and non-critical processes that run and we need a way to orchestrate the processes and, and, and even like rapid deployments like you see uh, in your Tesla cars, how we get uh, over the air updates. And you know, you have this, all this uh, information that is coming in from different sensors and uh, all of that has to be uh, taken care of uh, while we try to manage the software processes and resource management, right? A lot of this hardware boards that run in the car, uh, the SOC is, designed for the lightweight operating system and you know, to make sure that we don't overutilize the resources, hardware resources. So, so pardon? SOC is a system on chip. System on chip. Okay, it's like uh, boards for edge devices. Right. Okay. So uh, it seems like we already have uh, a way to do all this in the edge environment, you know, with containers. You know, we, we know that containers help in process isolation, they're lightweight, efficient, you can run on uh, uh, very uh, thin hardware. Uh, you know, it helps in uh, resource management uh, with uh, C groups and uh, rapid deployments, everything, right? We can auto start containers, do a bunch of stuff. So our talk is gonna be a lot about containers and also system D. So we're, we're talking about software processes and we will learn how we can manage the software processes with uh, system D in the container environment. Okay, so it took me time. I'm, I'm an old guy from virtualization, and uh, at the end, uh, it's a process. It's an isolated process. And um, the iso there is, um, uh, so we have a group. We want to manage what we call prods, pods. It's a group of uh, processes which, have, um, which are isolated from other groups. And the isolation is based on our you know, application functionality. So if we need um, two or three processes to interact with each other, uh, if we have some kind of a server, server that interacts with a database and in the specific network, uh, so they have a, a separate, a specific, specific level of isolation. And um, um, they are confined to speci specified limits of C groups. C groups are, um, 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 let's call it a, Let's call it a feature for now yeah. uh, for control groups, which means we can take those groups and, and um, 
put some limitations on the CPU and memory and stuff like that. Okay? So it's pretty powerful. But at the end, we have namespaces. They are used in Docker, for instance, but I think in other, other um, we will, we will, dis we will um, uh, see later on that we are using more options of namespace that give us uh, more security and isolation. And related to C group, uh, we, could, uh, we could have um, trees of, of groups and we could uh, define for each one of them resources, which is pretty cool. Um, so at the end, containers are Linux. It's a Linux process in some kind of a sandbox, okay? And it's really efficient, okay? So um, system D, uh, I don't know, from 2015, when did um, other, other um, Linux, uh, enterprise Linux uh, vendors uh, started to, there were big discussions about uh, whether to uh, ship an uh, operating system with, uh, with system D, yes or no? So, uh, as, well, okay, yeah. So, uh, um, but, uh, after the, you know, we have the, the, the boot process, so once the kernel is uh, uploaded into the, into the uh, memory, um, it does whatever it does, and then it search for the location of the first uh, process, which is the init process, which is the um, father of all processes, okay, which runs systemd. And after that, based on the, um, let's call it framework, okay, of uh, uh, messaging and, uh, and um, um, notification and stuff like that, uh, there are um, um, service ordering that could be run in parallel, and each service could manage by himself, wait for a specific, uh, a specific service to be ready, and then continue once it receives a notification that the dependent service is, is, is up and running. It's very cool, because we can play with it like a state machine for services, for instance, try to think of it. So we, there are many goodies here. Uh, you know, we could, um, after boot, we could uh, just start um, uh, the process without any config specific, conf specify specific configurations. We can set the resource control, how many uh, memory, how do we, do, we do we want. We have the unified logging with the journal CTL once the, the system, the framework is up. And uh, we have security and we have the most important one, uh, not most, one of the important one is the messaging bus system among all the systemd um, uh, units. So, containers and systemd, you know, why integrate? It's, it's actually a no-brainer, right? So, containers are a group of processes, and systemd helps manage those processes. You know, we are, uh, you know, using, you know, the existing, uh, like, systemd things, what it does with service management, you know, starting up processes, bringing it down, and, you know, and kind of start and stop containers. You know, a lot of applications, you want a container up right after the boot, and you can have... Uh, unit file and system D actually uh, start making it start the process as soon as you uh, boot. And logging, you know, we have journal CTL uh, which helps in login and, and notifications and sockets. So we, we just see that, we just go hand in hand, like two pieces of puzzle uh, fitting in perfectly. So we would like to run containers maybe as a service, is it? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, now we come to a, like a heated kind of debate between like Podman. How many of you uh, work with Podman? How many of you uh, work or worked with Docker? No Docker? Okay. No, no. Both of them are good, but try, try to learn new things. Yeah, I mean, for people who use Docker and also Podman, I mean, Docker kind of uses this monolithic uh, Demon, like Docker Demon, right? So, uh, whereas Podman, uh, you know, moved away from it and started using the fork, fork exact model, you know, and that uh, really helped them in system D uh, integration, and and that's like being demonless, you know, has definitely helped the community to kind of have all this, a lot of these features that demanded by Kubernetes and. So actually, the community has uh, moved from the vendor lock of Docker, they, were, they wanted to control everything. And once, uh, you know, it was, um, it was required by the community to run containers uh, under systemd. 
But when you run a server, a service, or sorry, a server like uh, Docker, which has a container D uh, support, so it does all the work when it's scheduled, uh, when it, when it, when it's scheduled um, uh, containers. So it is always up. Everything done through it. There is lots of communication over there. Okay? While in Podman, and um, um, it, 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 it related to the um, uh, OCI um, uh, regulation, um, um, sorry, um, specification, and the, there is another, another for, for Docker, for uh, Kubernetes, there is another engine which is called the CRIO engine. Uh, and and, um, and uh, uh, CRIO and, uh, and Podman could run OCI images uh, like that. And um, Podman just used fork and exec, okay? Which means if we have, um, and the fork and exec, which means I have a client, okay, as a user, and I'm forking a process, okay? So, but the client is going down, and it's living in its own user namespace. And then when it goes up, it can see the images, and it can see the, the running, uh, running processes or running containers. So if another user will, uh, will uh, try to do a Podman images or Podman PS to see what are the images or Docker images, Docker PS, so it will not see them, okay? So uh, you know, I think there were some efforts to integrate like half system D in Docker, but I think uh, the Docker community was not very eager on it. They still wanted Docker daemon to control all the life cycle of the container and then I think the community uh, moved forward uh, with having uh, system D with uh, Podman. And I think uh, the first version, Podman came in 2018. I think it was by 2019 when actually uh, a lot of automation came with uh, system D and Podman. And yeah, Podman, right, yeah. You know, Podman definitely won with uh, you know, system D uh, integration. You know, it definitely gave the community a lot more flexibility, right, to, uh, to kind of manage the life cycle of the container. You know, they could. Uh, well, one more issue here is that once you fork an exec, you have a process that runs. Okay, if it's a process like a regular application process, you can make it a service. So why, when when you just moved from the container container D option to work with Docker, and you work with fork with a, with a fork and exec, you just Schedule processes, and that's it, in an isolated environment. Think of it. And then from there, it's very easy to manage them as a service, services, and it's really cool. So let's move forward and, uh, all right, so we'll, we'll look into you know, the evolution of like, system the integration with Podman. I think the first version uh, back in 2019, if I'm not wrong, you know, we, we got the Podman generate system the uh, functionality a command uh, within Podman that would help generate a service file, a system D file for, for a container. And, and this, again, was a huge uh, blessing for a lot of people who wanted to uh, use system D to uh, control the containers, right? Uh, bringing up the container and having different uh, policies set. And, and that's the simple command, uh, the Podman generate uh, system D and you just it generates a, a, system, like a system D unit file for you. But we'll see uh, like how it's evolved to today. Uh, like it's the, so the Podman generate system D command is, is deprecated. And so there were a lot of things that were involved in it, right? So you had to have a container up and you had to run the command to generate the unit file and then you had to uh, Install it, enable it, and then run it. And also, a lot of times, write your own uh, exec start command, which is the Docker run command, with a lot of extra parameters. And so, so we work in the automotive team, and I think when they were trying to use containers in the car, like the initial prototyping, uh, there was an engineer and drivers, Alexander Larson. So he wrote a tool that would help uh, in easy integration of uh, system D, that basically a quick way of generating system files and managing uh, the unit files, right? And doing it in a more efficient way. And so he proposed it to the upstream, and so we have the tool now called as uh, Podman Podless. Yeah, and it was uh, initially written in Python, and then uh, once it was um, introduced to the community, so it it was uh, it converted to uh, uh, to to, um, to Go. So 
What is Quadlet? It's, um, it's a generator of unit files for containers. And it's part of the, um, of the installation of uh, Podman. So for each, for each new Podman uh, release that we have, there is a new Quadlet release. Okay? This way, when we generate these uh, system unit files, if there are some updates okay, in, the, in the definition and mapping of, uh, of um, attributes and, and parameters, uh, we all the time receive the latest and, and um, the most um, um, fitted one to the to the current Podman release. Okay, so there are so no break to, uh, breakage while while we are upgrading. Yeah, okay. we don't have to go and maintain those uh, yeah. system unit files after every uh, Podman release. Uh, and this is how a, a like, like a sample Quadlet file looks like. It resembles a system the unit file, uh, but we also have a few uh, interesting things like the container section where we can. Uh, actually have the name of the container and uh, the image that it wants to hold. And I will go further and see uh, what quadlets uh, help, like how quadlets help, what problems do they actually solve. Okay, so we say that uh, it's a um, declarative way, which means we want to write a unit file, but this unit file is very big at the end. But for us, we are just want to run a container. So we need um, between uh, three, four to uh, eight, or uh, 12 uh, lines, and that's it. When we generate, so Quadlet is a, is a unit file generator based on a declarative um, input file, okay? So it waits, it, it, uh, when it runs, okay, when we will uh, say, we will mention when, when it runs, it search for specific inputs in specific directories, okay? And then it generate systemd unit file for the specific uh, service, okay? So Quadlet, um, um, uh, just reduce uh, all the, um, the, all the um, let's call it black work of creating this unit file, because you just have one file. Whenever you, su you, do, uh, you run a systemctl uh, daemon reload, it just search for the inputs of the file, generate the real uh, systemd readable uh, unit file, and then it uh, enables the service also. You just have to start it, okay? So again, a lot of the work uh, manual steps that you had to previously do at Podman system generate command, you know, uh, Quadlet does it for you. And, and also, uh, the biggest thing is like constructing like complex uh, Podman run commands with all of these variables, right, with all the dependencies. Um, and then it also enables the uh, unit file. And the only thing, like Yarif said, is to do is to just start the process. And uh, so we'll, we'll see an example on how quadlets work, uh, quadlets in action. So we'll take an example of uh, deploying a multi-container application using quadlets. Uh, so we'll, we'll see that quadlets actually support what these four different uh, say like template files, like quadlet files. The first is uh, a .container file that you know, manages uh, how you want to run a, a container using the quadman run. And also uh, uh, cube files, right? You can also run compose file, Docker compose file, or cube file uh, in the Kubernetes environment. And dot .network files is to, to have a container uh, network for your uh, multi-container multi deployments. And also uh, like persistent volumes. And again, like you would see the quadlet name would end with dot .container, dot .cube, dot .network, or dot .volume. So we'll uh, take a simple example, I mean, just for demonstration purpose, uh, we'll take an example like how uh, we can show a WordPress MySQL uh, example of, uh, in a multi-container environment. Uh, it's a very simple setup just to demonstrate the power of uh, quadlets, uh, how we can do. Uh, so we have a WordPress uh, network here, which has a WordPress container and WordPress DB container. Uh, like two containers that run uh, in the WordPress network and we also have a WordPress volume for the WordPress app and, and also a, a volume for the DB itself. So we have like five. Uh, well, one, one, one more thing here, it's uh, the volumes. We would like to isolate the, uh, the volumes of the container while, while it is on the disk, okay? So, it's like we are protecting the, the application volume from outside, from other users, okay, and from the root. And um, the same for Go for the network. You know, it's like uh, we use, the, there is a usage, if you, if you try to compare it to Docker, 
In Docker, mostly, uh, uh, they are doing the namespacing for the users, okay? But generally, they are running with root, um, uh, as, as, under the root user. And here in Podman, whatever we speak right now, you could do all, even for your, you, know, you can run systemd for users, okay? Not only for the uh, root users, okay? So the fork and exec um, added so many added values over here. So we, 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 have, we are like generating a pod, okay? A, a group of processes that interact on the same network, okay? It's, by the way, another namespace for networking. So Podman uh, has uh, at least six, I think, namespaces. Okay, so we totally isolate the environment that we are running, which is very cool. And remember, it's Linux process, okay? So uh, we'll take a look at how each one of these uh, plotted files look. Uh, I mean, they're simple for like the WordPress network. It doesn't have any dependencies, it's just a label. And for the, uh, for the volume, uh, it's just uh, like the volume name. And we'll actually uh, look at a, a little more interesting uh, dot container wallet file which has the container section where we can uh, have the specifications for the container like image and the, depend the dependencies here like network and volume uh, defined uh, and also uh, this is for the app container and we'll see uh, also in our demo like how everything is dependent on each other and how everything will uh, run together uh, so well, what's important here? Wait, before. This one, systemd. You have the require and after. We can use systemd at the end. We have a dependency of services. Assume that we, ha we have a services. Here we could see that the app, okay, uh, is is, uh, requires the WordPress DB. And we were looking at the WordPress DB earlier. It requires uh, the, the volume, okay, for it. And uh, the after, is, it says that, okay, only when the service is up, you can start and run. Okay, so basically, if you think about software, you could do with, uh, without relation to Podman, just for systemd, you can create services state machines for your uh, applications, which is amazing. So yeah, I mean, in here in this example, uh, so it requires the WordPress DB service to be up before the app container starts. So, so that's how we, we define the uh, dependencies here. And let's actually see it uh, working. So we have a video recorded and we'll, we'll explain as uh, we show it works. It's working. Maybe from there. All right. So. Play. Maybe with this one. Yeah. All right. So uh, we just have a, a Git repository for like Portland portlets that has a bunch of service files in this uh, directory, which are actually quadlet files. So we see it's WordPress network, uh, app volume, uh, DB volume, and also the DB container and app container. Uh, so we are just scanning it to see how it looks. Uh, like I showed previously in the slide, it's, uh, it's a simple uh, file with uh, no dependencies uh, for network and volume, but we will see uh, uh, how the dependencies look in uh, like the container uh, Wallet file. So here, uh, like Yeri was talking, like we have, uh, it requires an after, I mean, if you work with systemd, you'd know uh, that it'll only run after it finds the WordPress DB service enabled. We also have the image um, section there, the volume dependency, and, uh, and also it, once it starts running, the WordPress will publish itself in uh, 8084. And what we'll do now is, uh, we will copy these files uh, and place it in uh, a particular directory, which will be like input directory for the Quadlet tool, the Quadlet generator to pick up from. So it's etc container systemd. So once we have those uh, files here, uh, we'll show uh, it's, it's a pretty simple thing. So all we have to do is do a systemctl uh, daemon reload. And the Quadlet generator would automatically use this Quadlet files to generate uh, the system uh, C, uh, systemd service files. So yeah, I did a daemon reload here, and I'm just looking at the status of probably the, the DB volume. Uh, 
So we'll see that WordPress uh, app <laughs> volume dot service, uh, and we see that it's loaded and but it's inactive. Uh, it's currently inactive. Uh, so we'll see how when we actually just start one service, which is the app uh, container service. Uh, so all the dependencies for the volume, the database is all defined in it, and this one. Uh, service will, will bring up everything and you see that uh, this is how it looks and so once the service file right so the container section of the service file uh, you know we we have all the dependencies there and uh, the cool part is the, the service section where we see an exec start command which is a department run and it builds this command uh, reduces the complexity of having all this variables defined, right? it automatically generates it for you. And all we have to do now is to, to run this, like start the service. It's already uh, loaded, like I said previously. Start the application, which because of the dependency starts everything. Yeah, starts everything. Yeah, so we'll see uh, how with just like one uh, start of the service, we'll see how everything actually also all the services get active. Oh. <laughs> so, oh. wait a bit. Just a second before, yeah. Another one. Another one, yeah. Oh. So here, uh, we see that the volume uh, network service, the volume. See service. here the C groups, which is part of you know when we're scheduling with system D for each one of them, which is cool. So yeah, the database, uh, container volume, and like everything is uh, started up as we have defined the dependency uh, and wallet file for the container app. And so now actually uh, we'll see that there are two containers that are up. Uh, one is, if you do a Podman ls, uh, you can see that there is the container app uh, for the WordPress app itself and the uh, database. MySQL database, um, and yeah, you know, finally you can just go to port 8080 and, and see that there's the uh, installation page for uh, WordPress. Yeah, again, this is a very uh, very simple demo. Of, we expect it for students. Yeah, yeah. So it's a very simple demo for how to use Podlets uh, in a multi-container environment. I mean, I'm sure you could use it on Kubernetes and have more complex uh, scenarios. So uh, yeah, that was the demo, and uh, yet more. Anything more to share? Do you have questions? I believe for automotive, and I could be wrong, that the uh, format that we've agreed for running multi-container applications as a standard for the industry is cube files. And I'm wondering, uh, do quadlets help us at all export into a cube file that would set all that up the same way? Um, if we set it up with quadlets, can, is there a command that'll let us just generate that cube YAML? Or um, do we have to go, is there a tool to go back and forth? Do we have a translation layer? Uh, do you mean, do you want to debug your? Um... So you, you've got the containers up and running, you've yeah. got WordPress yeah. up and running, and you've got the volumes yeah. and the network and the two containers. Is there a button that will just spit out the cube YAML for that? Uh, I maybe there is. I, I didn't do that. Yeah, maybe okay. there is. Yeah. Dan, Dan is here. I, I'm, yeah. Yes, there is. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Any other yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. You please. Right. Ah. Okay. Sorry. Uh. If it's possible for the system D, the, uh, the, the Podman uni file to be migrated to the correlate automatically, or user have to refer to the correlate menu to kind of a... Sorry, again, again, again. When we, traditionally, when we run Podman generate, I think a, a specified dash dash unit, we will generate the uni file, right? Okay. Uh, but currently we are using the correlates. Yeah. Is there any way to migrate from the uh, uni file to the correlates automatically. I'm not aware of it, uh, but it's, it's, yeah. 
inversa. Uh -huh. Oh, I see, I see. But not the other way around, I'd say that from the correlates to the... I see. So I just learned about C run VM uh, earlier in the uh, talk earlier. Is that compatible with the Quadlet ecosystem? Is that all just work? That's great. It's good to have you here, Dan. Yeah, any other questions? Anyone already using it? Experiences to share? We, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I would like to know if uh, there is any way to like migrate from Docker Compose YAML file to Quadlets. I, I think um, I don't think, but uh, but I think that you could uh, maybe uh, try to run. I ah, know you cannot. You need the command, full command. Okay. 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 Yeah. But you can use. To generate the quadlets, right? <laughs> yeah. So you use Compose to get the containers up and running. Yeah, that's And it. then you use Podlet to generate the quadlets. But uh, <laughs> that's not a yes from Dan, so, so don't, take, end, don't take my word from it. At the end, I think it's easier to invest one time of migration and, and run it, okay? If only there was a translation layer for Compose files. Mm -hmm. I actually have two questions. They're a little unrelated, but I'm just throw them both at once, and then you tell me. The first question is, uh, on your example, on your demo, I saw the network, but I couldn't clearly see how is it that you kept it so only these two containers use it, how you kept the outside from yeah, seeing it. That, that's the namespace of the network. Okay. In Docker, you do not have it, for instance. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you, if, if we were looking right now and we were doing a Podman network LS, we see that there is a network created. Okay? The same for the volume. Podman volume LS, you see that there is a volume. Okay? So uh, this is, that's, the, that's the, the strength of this, um, of, of the, of this uh, move, that the, the fork and exec open so many opportunities, first of all, and, and the usage of many types of namespaces for IPC. Okay? You, could, you could have it also. In, on the system D files that you generated, you can actually yes, tell that. Yes, you could okay. do man, man, just, uh, man uh, quadlet, you see whatever, it's a mapping. And if you have a problem and something is missing, you will have to add the dash dash uh, podman args, okay, manually. But okay. you could open, it will be easier because if the you could open um, a pull request to the podman cool. community and cool. do whatever needed, okay, because right. it's, it's just translation. Just, I didn't do that. If you go back to the doc container. Yeah, I'm not sure you did it right, but. Yeah. You see where it says network yep. equals WordPress network? Uh -huh. That will use the WordPress network which was generated in the dot network file. Okay. All right. So, so that's where the so that that means that the two containers are both on the same WordPress.network Podman network. Okay, the trouble I've had, and I don't know if anybody experienced this, I don't know what system D native versus what was generated. I mean, yeah, yeah. So just the container block. Okay. Cool. Then when you look at the generated, you see that there are parts that move to different places in the system generated system D file. And you, if you look at the, the man of Quadlet, you have uh, an option to run uh, the generator in a dry run. Then you could see, you could play with it and see what's okay. happening. Okay, you just answered my second question. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. 
over there. Uh, I'll give you a leading question. How would I do this on two different nodes? Two different nodes? Yeah, is there a way to orchestrate system D unit files using quadlets on two different nodes? Yes. Yes, what, there what's is, the tool but I didn't to do play that. with it. Yes, sorry? What's the tool to do that? Uh, do you speak uh, about a Podman system? Uh, no. Okay. I'm leading you to its blue chi. Oh, that's, that's uh, we have, okay, one second here. Uh, <laughs> so we have to do a PR for our next, uh, next um, uh, uh, call, uh, talk, that will be at 5.30. So this is just, uh, yeah, for, uh, we have, uh, we are speaking about freedom from interference in a more, um, detailed way and this one is just part of it okay and there is another another um, let's call it um, uh, uh, framework or software components that uh, uh, really send the messages through the bus system of system D okay so, uh, bus network okay and we can uh, uh, really orchestrate remotely um, unit file or system 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 units okay uh, it's very nice we'll have some demo for that Hey, um, all the artwork in the slides with the Podman seals doing things, did you, were those accessible or did you use AI to make those? Kind of irrelevant. But, the what? Uh, all of the, the graphics with the Podman ah. seal logos doing like opening yeah, containers my and things. Did, did you? That I, my, first of all, yes. And second, my friend told me that I have to, to do a brand, uh, <laughs> brand naming about it, that it was generated by, uh, by AI. But yes, it's a... Uh, I'm good, I'm, I'm good um, you know, I, until the age of 25, I, I, I did very nice drawings, okay? But currently, I lost my confidence. So, <laughs> I just did a text, okay? Please do this and that. So, thank you very much. Um, yeah. Thank you, everyone.